before I start talking, let me just quickly talk about the background noise. There's currently a, I guess a storm passing over, which happens a lot. And there's a lot of thunder and a lot of lightning. So you may see some flashes of lightning and you may hear some thunder like that. I have on headphones, so hopefully the audio won't be as bad, but there's no promises. Now we're going to be talking about the architecture process, architecture studio process. Or, well, I'm just going to guide you through what I am working on as an architecture student doing online. Also, I think, honestly, I think the rain and the thunder adds like some ambiotic noise, some really nice ambiotic noise. You never go online and like listen to those playlists in the rain or whatever. It's really nice. So, um, just think of this as this, put on some chill knitting and, you know, work with me. For the very first project that we have for architecture, we are doing motion and form and movement, that sort of thing. So we are taking, we are making our own Vitruvian diagram. So we are creating our own, trying to use our own motion. So I went ahead and I already made a small, small little video that I have to now cut into photos and then make a body diagram of myself and then I also need to program it which is basically like make my own sort of way of measuring my body for the first part of this project. Project 1A we will call it and then project 1B I will deal with another time. I have to go in Rhino. Our professor told us that she wants us to draw everything in Rhino which honestly I'm going to try. However, if a push comes to shove, I will be taking it and putting it on Illustrator and drawing it on Illustrator because it's so much easier to do that kind of stuff on Illustrator and you can still use that drawing in Rhino, but I'm gonna do what she says and do it in Rhino first. So these are some reference images that our studio professor give to us. Looking at this one, I think I'm gonna do something like this. Well, this with a mix of this hair, um, of the top part of it. Now, one thing that I have to figure out is how I'm going to program it. Um, this box program that she showed us here, this one I think is very creative, but, um, I mean, this is a little too much in depth for me. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right in and start doing my photos. I cannot trace this image for the life of me in Rhino. I've tried so hard. I even took off Oh Snap and everything and it's just not working. So I'm going to put my images on Illustrator and we're gonna do this all over again. Let me quickly tell you something about architecture. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. It feels like one big art class. And I loved art. Art was my favorite subject in school. It doesn't feel like high school at all, just so you know. The only thing that's, you know, annoying or tedious that I don't like is like on my general education classes. But anything related to architecture, this is fun. I'm actually thoroughly enjoyed and thoroughly happy. the front of I've only done the heavy lines I haven't done any medium lines or light lines or anything as yet but I finished that my eyes are hurting so bad they've had really horrible eye strain recently because just staring at my computer for so long and my phone screen um, for like the long lectures that we have because 
architecture studio classes five hours and being online is just a lot so i think i'm gonna try to take like a three hour nap or so and then get back up and finish doing this update um it's the next day i finished the drawing part just you know the tracing part of my drawing now i have to go and layer everything and then figure out how i want to dimension everything so i can finish my final drawing almost there i should be done hopefully i would like to say in the next two three hours and then i can move on to part 1b and also do tomorrow the drawings that I have so far now it's just layering them so I can get my Vitruvian diagram Janae style and get this show on the road all right she is done part 1a is done and finished with she is cute and I'm very happy with how it came out now it's time for p1b part two of part one so for the next part what i have to do is i have to create a motion map of an interaction between two people in a space either in a planned view or an elevation view so i was either going to do an interaction between two people in bed which would be a plan view or an interaction between two people working construction or whatever in elevation view and i'm gonna do the elevation view i really couldn't decide which one to do and i put a poll on instagram and people voted for the interaction between two people on a ladder kind of thing anyways they didn't know they voted for that but that's what they voted for that being said follow me on instagram because i like to post polls because sometimes i really can't decide so i'll let the people decide for me what i'm gonna do is i took a video i had my parents act out the scene i needed on a ladder and whatnot so now i'm gonna draw up an elevation of the space they were in and then i have to figure out how i want to map it out i haven't decided as yet but we're gonna look at more reference photos that my professor gave us along with the interaction that we're mapping out we also have to include a sensory module or something we need to include a sensorial effect he gave us some which is vision hearing haptic kinesthesia skin smell sense of air whatever we need to add that effect to the drawing i'm not exactly sure how i'm gonna add that and i don't even know what i'm gonna add this yet but first we're gonna start by mapping out the site and then we're gonna do that but let me first decide which style i'm going for let's just check out the reference images so i can see exactly what i want to do with this okay so this is a plan view i guess the person just did the interaction with lines i'm trying to figure out how i'm going to separate two bodies because it has to be interaction between two people now i like this i am doing an elevation view and this is in the elevation of a person so i do like that flow I may actually do something like that. Oh, that could actually work really well. Well, I think so far this one is probably the most helpful. I'm not necessarily gonna do something like this, but I think I'm getting inspiration from this to start working on my other one. Also, just a reminder for architecture. Sometimes I get really scared. Well, not scared, I get really anxious and I get really worried when i'm starting a project because i'm like how am i supposed to come up with something new something that's different something that's supposed to be wow however you have to understand that you cannot really rely on your own imagination in this day and age because there's so much that has been done now there is a lot of that has not been done if you can figure out what it is but in order to figure out what to do you need to look at what has already been done so looking at reference images googling how other people have done stuff is a good way for you to find your own inspiration to do things so do not think that you just have to use your own brain power to come up with an idea you can use inspiration from others all right now unlike p1a part 1a where i'm modeling on illustrator i will be doing this one on rhino because more specifically we will have to eventually make it three-dimensional and we will be doing that in rhino so 
that's one of the reasons why our professor told us to do it in Rhino and honestly I think this one will be easy mapping it out because the elevation doesn't have as many curves or anything like the body that I was doing so it should be easier and let's begin Okay, so this is my final drawing for my part 1B. Um, it's interaction between two people. As I explained, this first one outlines the um, spine of the first person who goes up the ladder, up the ladder, up the ladder. This second one outlines the hand of the person. The interaction is basically a handover of material. Um, and for the sensory, I'm using touch. And so this is basically touch and temperature of the transfer between material um, from one person to the other. I'm not too happy with how it came out, to be honest. Um, I had a hard time trying to figure out how I want to represent it. And I don't think that this is necessarily how I wanted to represent it. But I, at the moment, cannot think of anything else or any other way to represent it. So this is how it's going to be for now. So now that everything is done, I'm just going to go to sleep. I only have one class tomorrow. That is my architecture studio, which is five hours long. But, I mean, I can't help that. So, yeah. I'm gonna see what my professor says, see what feedback I get on my drawings, and then we move on from there. Before I go to bed, I'm going to pin up. This is how we digitally pin up. We digitally digitally pin up in Miro. Um, so these are my other studio mates pinning up now. And so this is where I'm gonna pin up. I'm all pinned up. Um, it actually took longer than I thought because the files were having trouble coming in. I'm in the second group of presentation. No one else has pinned up us yet. It's this first group. Um, and now it's time for me to slumber and sleep. You know sort of the quote unquote game that you're doing and then help you make decisions that is is a lot of the things and so hello jenna here so you can probably hear in the background they're currently presenting and I am listening, I really am. However, one thing that I failed to realize yesterday while paying up on Miro is that we're not following that order. So even though I pinned up where I'm not at the end, I'm not at the beginning, I'm right in the middle, there was a sign up sheet where we really, you know, sign up to really follow an order. And because I missed that, I am now the last presenter. Out of 14 people, I'm the 14th. So I have a lot of waiting, because usually once they finish presenting, they can just leave. They can listen to a couple few and then dip. I have to wait since I'm all the way at the end. <sighs> you would think I would have learned my lessons from last semester, because actually I would be the last person a lot of time that I would follow sleep in the studio. And let's not talk about it. Um, I guess you can say construction work where I modeled him as the 
um, curves. I used his spine to model him as he went up um, the ladder and then my hand modeled me interacting with him and giving him um, different supplies. And I modeled, uh, for the sensory, I did passive touch. So each of these lines, you could almost say like, this is a center line, this is a center line, this is a center line, which is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But you know, what you really want to do is actually maybe somehow map the sensation when you first touch these objects. And then you give All right, I actually got a lot of good feedback on my drawing so i was very happy with it and i got a um a lot of good things that i can improve on and fix and i think my drawings will come out great in the end um that class was seven hours long it went from five hours to seven hours because we went a little overboard i guess with the um critiques now that i'm done that's what it's like you know the whole architecture process of making a um drawing for a project at home on the internet using your computer. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was educational. Hope it was inspiring, especially if you want to become an architecture student. So you know what you're getting yourself into. But aside from that, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you'd like to see more or other things you'd like to see. But as for now, that was a beautiful day. It's time for bed. Bye.